Christians used to tattoo themselves to identify themselves Mm -hmm. or tattoo messages secretly. Mm -hmm. So you shave your head, you have someone tattoo a message on your head, and then... You mentioned earlier getting, would you say, nerdy tattoos? Uh, Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old were you when you got your first tattoo? 14. You were 14. For, like, early 14. Like, we're talking, like, four days in, like... So, like, what, ninth grade or eighth grade? Eighth grade. A- eighth grade. I okay. think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Eighth grade, you get your first tattoo. Um, do you remember? I'm not sure you remember. What I do what remember it? what it was. It's these words on my wrist. It what says, it? live, love, burn, die. As a 14-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like the it's the <laughs> dude version of live, laugh, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because the burn is supposed to be like burning with passion. And, you know, as a kid, as a 14-year-old, I tattoo, I get it. And I'm like, dude, I'm so hard right yeah. now. Like, I'm yeah. so tough. And yeah. it's such a dorky tattoo. But I, I got it with a friend, and that's why I've kept it. I have it like. You guys got, got matching tattoos. Yeah, we got matching tattoos in the okay. same spot. I have yeah. a ton of matching tattoos, actually. Bro, yeah, we, uh, do you know where the oldest tattoo shop is? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yeah. Have you been? No, but I want to go. Yeah. The back of my head is is perfectly right for the Jerusalem cross. Bro, the Jerusalem cross is fire. I got one right here. Dude, it's, yeah. it's and then so I got, hard. I got this uh, resurrection icon. That's so um, sick. Yeah, it's, dude, that's, that place is a trip because it's owned by, I want to say, 30 generations of tattoo artists. That's crazy. And they're using stamps. They're like these little like stamp things. Uh-huh. And then they're that's where they get the design from. But the stamps go back to like their great, 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 great grandfather. Yeah. And so you're getting these like hundreds of years of tattoos of Palestinian family. It's it's amazing. So you, yeah. as a tattoo guy, you should definitely, I, have, one thing settled down, you yeah, should go yeah, for sure. Yeah, I want to go. And then there's also like, yeah, in tattooing culture, it was heavy in that area. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the Bible had to make rules about it. Sure. So they were going nuts on it. Yeah. But there's like uh, some of the oldest tattoo traditions in the world are, I think, Coptic Christians. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they tattoo the cross on their forehead. Mm-hmm. And even the Pope was like, it's awesome. Yeah. I'm down with yeah. it. And well, so, a lot of people don't know that, that that Christians have made pilgrimages to Jerusalem to get tattoos yeah. for, I want to say, thousands of years. Thousands. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And Christians used to tattoo themselves to identify themselves, mm-hmm. you know, um, or tattoo messages secretly. Mm-hmm. So you shave your head, you have someone tattoo a message on your head, and then they tattoo the seal of the king mm. or whoever gives the message. You grow your hair back out. Mm. You travel to a place. Mm. You know, now you're like a spy and they shave your head and they see, oh, there's the message. That's crazy. A, a Greek king did that where he sent his messenger back and they're like, what did the king say? And they shave his head and it said revolt in Greek. Whoa. Sick, right? Whoa. <laughs> It'd be a tough tattoo. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That is kind of a hard tattoo. Right. So um, what? at what point do you like really turn up with tattoos like 14 immediately first, immediately so you just immediately you just jump, okay. i was i i uh i joined the army when i was 17 okay and i had like it was a problem they were like ah mm. oh, we gotta like figure out how to get you in here with sleeves when i was 18 years old i had full sleeves my face my neck like how did wait you how did you do that while you were in the army i i left the army uh after a year I was okay. medically discharged. Okay. Well, so, yeah, thanks yeah. Thanks for serving our country no. for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. I, as a kid, I was like, I'll avenge 9-11, and I just wanted to escape from my home. Yeah. So I joined, I joined the infantry, or I was stupid. So I lived in Benning for a year, and then I was medically discharged. Uh, l- this army doctor who, um, in retrospect, I don't know if he saved me or helped me, but he meant well. Mm-hmm. Basically, I came in. After I had graduated from AIT and all this other stuff, and I was getting ready to go to um, some other things because uh, I had like a ranger contract mm-hmm. or whatever. And so I was getting, I had done like RIP and I was getting ready to like go to ranger school and I was going to fail. Mm-hmm. I'm a 17 year old kid. AIT was so difficult for me, like airborne school. So I'm there and my eye is messed up because I've been shooting and I was seeing double. Mm. And I was like, this is a real problem. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it turned out that I have like a condition in my eye, mm. but it's not a deal breaker. Mm-hmm. I could have stayed, but this doctor was like, you're not even 18 yet. Mm. Why don't you leave, do some growing up, and then come back. I'll, I'll write you a medical, uh, a medical release, mm-hmm. but you can still go to a doctor and get checked out, get glasses, or do whatever you need to do, and then come back. Mm-hmm. And he like was very for real with me. Like, mm-hmm. you're miserable. You're a child. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't be here. Mm-hmm. And he basically like helped smuggle me out of the army. And of course, I got home, and now I had a year of discipline, good food. Mm-hmm. I'm a man now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my stepfather's 
group and my brothers are doing motorcycle club stuff and they're like well look at you you know how to shoot a rifle you got big you got strong you know <laughs> you're a perfect candidate <laughs> get on in here big dog and that's Whoa. what happened so i never went back Whoa. Obviously. that's crazy yeah yeah Wow. So, so the whole thank you for your story. Anytime, like, there's people who are like, you know, because I have like a, a military record or whatever, yeah. so these people would be like, you should. The theaters does a thing like, oh, every veteran stand up, and someone will look at me. I'm like, it, don't look at me for not any amount thing. of time. I'm not <laughs> any even close. I wasted money. I, I should have to pay back what I stole. Wow. And so, y so you do this year going through the training, and then you get out, and that's when the that's when you get into the face tats. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately, mm. like month one mm. you know i remember because so i'm we're older or whatever and so when i joined what it would be like 2004 2003 2004 yeah i joined in 2003 my birthday's in december so 2004 so when i got out i had like no money mm -hmm. you know i had the money from from being there and stuff mm -hmm. and i remember i took a bus from georgia to back to my small town in utah and i was on that bus for like three days mm -hmm. and i bought like a nintendo ds or something but yeah i got home and immediately just spent all my money mm. on like xboxes and tattoos and stuff mm. started chasing girls mm -hmm. and just like lost lost the sauce so i got lost on the sauce mm. immediately mm. you know yeah. um w when's your birthday December 15th. December 15th. Okay. Mine yeah. is uh, December 31st. Nice. What, oh, year, what year were you supposed to graduate high school? Um, 2005. 2000, okay. So I'm class of 03. Okay. My wife yeah, is yeah. class of 04. So you're a little younger than I am. 05. Um, and so you transition out of the military. Yeah. Um, and then at some point you got like a Satanist tattoo. Yeah, yeah. I mean... And at this point, are you believing in God or are you not believing in anything? No, I... I at this point, I'm like... Uh, um, I read like a Richard Dawkins book and I was like, well, I know everything now and I'm the <laughs> smartest guy in the world, you know? And so... Hey, if you guys want to see the full extended version of our conversation with Shane Smith, including segments that will never be available public, consider signing up for a seven-day free trial for our Patreon community. You can watch the full version of this conversation with the extended clips, and you can get access to all of our other podcast guests in the future before they come on and be able to ask them questions while we're streaming the conversation. So hit the link in the pinned comment to join today. And if you're not convinced, check this out. So you go from full-blown atheist yeah to satanist to aesthetic satanist to aesthetic to satanist. full on satanist wow i read like a richard dawkins book and i was like well i know everything now and i'm the <laughs> smartest guy in the world you know and i had the sigil of satan i would argue against christians that satan is the better guy mm. i'm having Stanley. like a psychedelic experience Whoa. i can't remember her i can only remember how she made me feel i come out as catholic Ten thousand followers lost in 24 hours really how long was this period and did you expect experience anything mm. be beyond the natural realm oh yeah and i have this like horrific overwhelming feeling that there's something on the other side of the door waiting for me to open it at night and i'm like terrified that there's something outside the door bruce lawn